Hi there. My name is Neil Maria. I'm one of the third year gastroenterology fellows at the Vache and Tamar Manukian Division of Digestive Diseases at UCLA. And today I'm going to be talking about an article that will be published in GIE entitled A Randomized Control Trial Comparing the Efficacy of Early Video Capsule Endoscopy to Standard of Care in the Approach to non hematemesis Gastrointestinal Bleeding. This was a study that was performed at the University of Massachusetts Medical School in Worcester, Massachusetts between 2015 and 2017. In this study, we were trying to ask the question of whether or not there is a better method to evaluating patients who have non-hematemesis gastrointestinal bleeding compared to our standard of care approach that we've been doing for several years now in GI. By non-hematemesis gastrointestinal bleeding, I mean patients who come in with melanin, hematochesia, or anemia. When we compare those patients to those who present with hematemesis, the algorithm for how we approach their diagnosis is actually a little bit different and actually I believe is, is much harder. When somebody comes in with hematemesis, we know that the bleeding source is going to be proximal to the ligament of trites, and we know that an upper endoscopy is most likely going to be the most beneficial test in terms of diagnosing the source of bleeding. With non-hematemesis gastrointestinal bleeding, the algorithm is actually much less clear. Let's take, for example, patients who have melanin. We know from other studies and from case reports that patients who have melanin can actually have bleeding anywhere from the pharyngeal space all the way down to the right colon. For hematochesia, Studies have actually shown that while we would assume that the majority of bleeding sources are actually in the colon, in a population like cirrhotics, more than half of the bleeding sources are actually proximal to the colon. So when a patient comes in like this with non-hematemesis GI bleeding, the attending gastroenterologist is faced with a diagnostic dilemma where they have to decide based on how a patient presents, what their history is, what their medical history is, what the color of the stool is, they have to make a decision about whether or not they want to perform an upper endoscopy or a colonoscopy or potentially both. And that's meaningful because if they are wrong on their initial diagnostic test, they may end up having to delay the patient's hospitalization and may have to do additional workup to identify the source. The other downside is that bleeding, as we know, will often stop on its own. So if you actually don't get the diagnosis on the first test, you may not get the diagnosis at all. And the patient may leave the hospital without a diagnosis and may be at risk for coming back to the hospital with a recurrent bleed, which obviously results in readmission, which puts increased costs on the hospital as well as the patient. So for our study, we thought that a video capsule may actually be beneficial in trying to address this problem. One of the things I didn't mention is that in patients who get a standard of care workup, we always wonder, well, hey, why don't we just do the video, why don't we just do the diagnostic test earlier in somebody's admission, either through a purge in the case of colonoscopy or an urgent upper endoscopy. Well, studies have actually shown us that if you do endoscopic tests too soon in the admission for someone's um, admission for GI bleeding, they're at risk for some adverse outcomes, such as uh, under resuscitation, and they actually can have increased mortality, and that's because, because they are under resuscitated and they get prepped or they get sedation, they may not tolerate the procedure as well. What's great about the video capsule is that you can actually do the diagnostic test unprepped and also unsedated and that maybe mitigates the risk of somebody who's under resuscitated. So for this study, what we did is we performed a randomized control trial that looked at two algorithms. One is the standard of care workup, and by standard of care we mean that the attending gastroenterologist sees the patient, makes a decision based on how the patient is presenting, and decides what diagnostic test to perform. And then the other arm was patients who got an early video capsule endoscopy, meaning that when they got to the emergency room, our team received a page, we went down and evaluated the patient, consented, randomized, and then once they were ready to go for the study, they immediately were given a video capsule endoscopy to ingest. We would then take a look at the real-time viewer as soon as the capsule was inside the, the stomach and look for any active bleeding. If there was bleeding in the stomach, we would let our GI colleagues know, and then they would perform an upper endoscopy as needed. If there was no blood, we would wait 45 minutes for the capsule to reach the small intestine. If the capsule didn't reach the small intestine within 45 minutes, we would then give them a prokinetic agent and then let the capsule go. The following day, we would then download the capsule, uh, recorder that is, and we would then analyze it for a source of bleeding. And based on where that source of bleeding was identified, we would then perform subsequent endoscopic tests that were directed to where the source of bleeding was. The primary outcome of this study was definitive localization of bleeding, meaning that you had to identify a source of bleeding, either active bleeding or a lesion that carries a high-risk stigmata of recent hemorrhage, for example, an ulcer with an adherent clot. 
We also looked at several other uh, secondary outcomes, including the rate of diagnosis of vascular lesions, mortality, readmission. We also looked at the overall costs between the two uh, arms to see if there was any difference there. Did we spare any costs with either algorithm? Um, the other uh, thing that we did in this study is we performed multiple different uh, statistical analyses, including a Cox proportional hazard model, a logistic regression analysis, and we also performed a Kaplan-Meier analysis as well. For this study, we randomized 87 patients. 45 patients were randomized into the standard of care arm. 42 patients were randomized to the early capsule arm. So how did we do? So in our study, we actually identified that video capsule endoscopy was superior to standard of care in the diagnosis and the definitive localization of bleeding. Um, other secondary outcomes that we showed, that capsule had an improved diagnostic rate compared to the standard of care arm. Um, we also noted that there was an increased uh, diagnosis of vascular lesions in the early capsule arm when compared to the standard of care arm. And also really interesting, we found out that the early capsule arm was di diagnosing a bleeding source in the colon more frequently than the standard of care arm, which was interesting. It was also specifically interesting in patients who had melana. So almost 20% of our patients in the early capsule arm who presented with melana had a bleeding source identified uh, distal to the foregut when compared to standard of care that only had a bleeding source identified distal to the foregut in about 9% about of cases. So there were some other outcomes that were not significantly different between the two arms. One was that the readmission rates were not significantly different, mortality rates were not significantly different, and also interestingly costs were not significantly different. So by putting uh, patients through the early capsule arm, we didn't actually increase the cost of their hospitalization. So what are some of the conclusions that we can draw from this study? I think the main conclusion is that potentially this is a new algorithm using a technology that's relatively new, something that was introduced to us about a decade ago, and using it in an interesting way that perhaps hasn't been looked at previously. I think one of the issues with our standard of care workup is that while we want to try and do endoscopies earlier in somebody's admission, because they may be under-resuscitated and also potentially because of logistic concerns, that's difficult. Potentially, this is mitigated by using an early capsule endoscopy. And while these results are exciting, there are some limitations to our study that should be considered. One is that, that this is a single center study. So a multi-center study is actually needed to really validate the findings that we identified in our article. Um, in addition, I personally would like to see longer term follow up with the patients that were enrolled in this study or in potentially future studies beyond just the 30 day window that we were following up patients. Mostly because I think that we may actually see a benefit in terms of the readmission rates or potentially even mortality rates down the line beyond just a 30 day follow up. So with that, I thank you for your interest in our article.